What's going on, guys? Got uh, those uh, solar panels up there that I mentioned in the previous video. They're a uh, 100 watt a piece. Um, I was going to mount them to a pole, so that way they'd be facing, you know, this way. Um, it's supposed to face south for where I live, and uh, be it at like a 25 or 30 degree angle, something of that nature. And, well, the pole's laying in there, but uh, I was afraid that uh, the wind would catch them and rip them off the pole, or somebody run into the pole, or, you know... The safest place for them is up there, but they're facing east instead of south. But it doesn't, well, I'm sure it's affecting them, but as far as uh, what I've been using here, it's been, I've only had one sunny day since I got them up there. And I've been able to use the things I normally use in here, you know, in the extreme. I mean, uh, now, I used to just only have the generator, and, you know, I'd only run that thing if I had, like, well, you see I got, you know, several drill batteries here. I would wait until I was, like, halfway through them and working on the other ones before I would turn it on, because I'd, I'd just be wasting gas. And then, you know, I'd... I'd you know, jam my stereo and stuff and play with it while I was charging the batteries. Now I can come out here and just turn the thing on. And it's on the whole time I'm here. Um, yesterday and the day before it was cloudy and even raining once in a while. And it pretty much, you know, when I get here, yeah, I, I get here around 11. And this thing will be up around, you know, 12.89. Uh, fully charged, I think it shuts down around 14 and then kicks back on at 13.5. Um, so far since I put this in, I've only had one really sunny day. So, but it would charge, you know, I've only ran the batteries down to around 12 volt. Um, 11, 9 with, you know, the thing running. When you turn it off, it was at like 12, 12.1. 12 um, so, I haven't really ran the batteries down, you know, m much more than about half of their capacity. I'd say that'd be somewhere around half, maybe one-third of, of their use. But, um, it keeps up with running a stereo at a moderate volume and tra charging several drill batteries in a day on a cloudy day. So... If I was to run, you know, I, I've been leaving around an hour before dark, and this will be at, you know, 12.1 shut off. So, I mean, I did use, well, no, because I come back here, you know, the time I come back is back to where it was when I, it was the previous day. The sun just came out. You know, if I get a couple of those, that'd be nice, but, uh... But the, yeah, the panels are facing the wrong direction, and I got—I haven't used that generator since I put—I plugged this in last week. Uh, I'm off all this week. I was off Friday and the weekend, and then all this week. So I mean, it's given it a good test as far as on a daily basis on what it what it can do, and so far it's. And if it would, I get bright sun, it, this thing would be charged up before I get here. I mean, it would be charged up and shut off. And so far, I've only seen it happen once because um, I've only had one sunny day. But this little light here will start flashing when it's charged. And then, uh, it, yeah, it turns off. I think it turn off this one and then flash in this one, I think it was. And then when the sun goes down, this one turns off. But this little light here for the, you know, saying the solars are connected will stay lit until like 8.30 at night. I mean, it, it stays lit as long as there's light out there. Let's see where we're at right now. 
um, the components of this thing, and this is definitely not a how-to video. It's this is just how I got it set up. Um, I decided to do uh, clamps on each battery, and then I also, even though it's not the best thing to use for a solar, um, is I'm using car batteries, and the reason I like doing the car battery thing is that. In the future, when these batteries ain't worth a crap, as far as storage, they'll start start up. They will still be able to start a car up. Um, I had another battery. This one here's a year old. Um, I would have to say, kind of jumping off subject, but this battery a year old. This is a Walmart battery, which is made by Johnson Controls. And then we got this XI guy down here. Um, the Johnson Control battery is better than a brand new uh, XI battery, hands down. Um, this battery here fully charged, you know, and after it's sitting for an hour or so and letting it kind of mellow out, it'll be at like 12.5 volts. This one here is new though. It'll say it's at like 13 and a half, you know, fully charged. This battery here will outrun that one twice over. You know, say you're running it on an inverter, it shuts off at 10.5 volts. This battery here has got twice the power. A year old. That guy down there, I've never actually ran it down to 10.5 volts. Uh, you know, it's a... Uh, I think it's an 850 cranking amp, and then this guy up here is a 525. But I've never had that one, you know, this bottom one here ran down all the way. But, back to the subject. Um, I decided to do the clamps because I'm oftentimes needing to jump start a tractor or a bike or um, I left my car sitting out here too long with the radio on and it's just easy about to unhook them and then I made these little plastic things that you can clamp the, the the cable on so it doesn't get contact with something else take the battery out use it for something and you can bring it back put it back in here or I can take a car battery out of a car, bring it in here, set it on, clamp these on it. Uh, just um, my inverter is good for 1500 watt, um, a 2000 surge, and that has been tested by another guy um, on YouTube for this this brand. He actually uh, is the one that convinced me to buy this, although it does have some issues. But it does have a you know a 2,000 surge. I actually guess it can actually run for the 2,000 watts for a few minutes before it starts overheating. Um, I guess I can step over to more about this. Um, one thing I like about this thing is it can run at a, a few hundred watts, and the fan doesn't run. It's you know it's quiet. I don't have this annoying stinking fan running. And let's see. I'll show you the old one. Hold on a minute. This is the old one. Um, I kind of like this guy. I mean, it was all right, but it was only good for like, you know, four, four hundred watts continuous running. It says seven fifty on it. I think it can hit that, but it just can't do it for a long time. It ends up shutting down. Um, maybe it just didn't have enough input power to it. You know, the cabling. Could have been that, but um, it's noisy. It, it has these little fans in the back. They run full blast no matter what you're doing with it. Um, they do have some kind of variable thing going, like as soon as you turn it on and say you have a cell phone charger plugged in. Uh, they'll kind of run a little slow, but anything more than that, say two cell phone chargers, which is a drop in the bucket, they're full blast running, and it's just annoying. Uh, I took one of the plugs out because I kind of hard hardwired it for a little bit, but and then it just seems it seems like things are kind of more more buzzy with it. Um, you know, you, you get that inverter buzz and certain power supplies in that. It seems like it's a little bit more buzzy. Um, back to this, my issue with this thing is, which I've showed in the previous one of my previous videos with the CFL bulbs. I ended up rewiring the whole garage so that there's no more than two CFL bulbs on a circuit. And even then, 
sometimes it'll still shut down turning on two CFLs. I mean, it's kind of a, it's almost, I don't know, a 50-50 thing, but I don't know. Sometimes, you know, then when it does that, I have to shut all the switches back off for the lights. Come over here and turn it off. Wait a few seconds, turn it back on, go back over there. But at any rate, uh, one of the things about, we'll go down to here. Um, I would have to say this is kind of a way that you can use lighter cabling and still, you know, and still have enough power going to your inverter. Um, the inverter has heavier cabling going to it. I can't say what size it is, but it just seems like, you know, this is supposed to be 8 gauge, and oh, so is this, but this is like three times the wire than what that is. But this is extremely heavy gauged, and I didn't have any connectors. I need to get some. But, uh, I made these, got these little uh, grounding buses. It'd be nice if I could find something, you know, heavier duty. So it would allow, you know, this aluminum, okay conductor, but not the best, you know, not as good as copper. It'd be nice if you could find something copper made. But, you know, basically each battery is wired individually to these. And then the inverter, I suppose I could even run it twice, you know, maybe run it down and run it to the other end so that way it increases, you know, the connection to the, you know and the conductibility of this but um right now i don't have any inline fuses um i do have a, a quick disconnect to shut the inverter down and if i wanted to disconnect a battery quickly i could just grab you know a terminal but as far as any fusing there's no fusing here except for what the, is in the inverter there's a dozen fuses inside of it um, that's one thing about the inverter that I really don't like is all the fuses is inside of it, but not just the fact of that is, is that they're all hard, you know, hard wired soldered in. So if you want to replace a fuse, you have to unsolder and solder a new one in. Um, I think I'm going to actually get into the market looking for another inverter. I definitely want something that doesn't have a fan kicking ass all the time. But it's either that or try to figure out some way to disable this things. It's like some kind of arc detector or something of that nature. There is a re I took it apart. There is a relay inside here. Um, and this thing continues to be putting out power, 120 volts. But that relay shuts down the output coming out. So I actually kind of had a thought of just soldering a stinking relay together. And, you know, this thing will no longer have any kind of safety for a short circuit. But the way it is right now, I'd rather be able to use this stupid thing for a couple of years and then it eventually blows up because of an sh accidental short circuit than, you know, to keep dealing with it, you know, to keep dealing with it the way it is. So enough complaining about that. Um, a little bit about what's going on here. Um, we got OSB in this front room, and I got some shelves put up. So I made a, I already kind of designated a spot for my power tools. But yeah, well, there's my solar setup. Now, once again, this is not a how-to because there's a lot of little things about it that isn't correct or how maybe it should be done but uh well there it is we'll see you guys later and uh see ya